Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at if you own land, how far above and below that property do you own? On paper, the concept of land ownership sounds very simple. You pay money, and in return, you're given unfettered access to a predetermined amount of land. But how much of that land do you actually own? Do you own the sky above it? What about all the animals that may live there? Do you own those too? All these questions and more define exactly what it means to own a piece of land. Surprisingly, many of the answers aren't well defined from a legal standpoint, as you'll soon see. Just before we get started, do note that the laws governing one's rights as a landowner vary considerably depending on location, even within a given country or state. With that caveat noted, we do intend to answer the questions I just mentioned, as well as a few more, in general for places like the United States and the UK. First of all, let's deal with how much of the air above your property you own, since that particular question has been one of the more common queries about owning or buying land that we've received here at Today I Found Out over the years. Historically speaking, if you owned a piece of land, you owned everything, both above and below the soil, from the deepest reaches of the earth right up to the heavens themselves, giving you a near infinite amount of property in the universe, with your property ever changing as the earth rotates and various celestial bodies move around. A popular maxim in this regard is whoever owns the soil holds title all the way up to the heavens and down to the depths of hell. Within the legal world, this maxim is described as the traditional starting point of property law, and it is considered to have been instrumental in shaping what we understand as property law today. Curiously, despite its ancient-sounding nature, the specific maxim can only be traced back as far as the 13th century and is largely believed to have been the brainchild of Italian scholar Arcusius. It's commonly assumed that the maxim made its way into English and subsequently American law thanks to Acurius's son, who was invited to England to teach law at the request of the then king. Its first use in court is attributed to the case of Berry and Pope in 1587, during which the maxim was cited as justification for a large structure being erected that blocked out the natural light to another property owner's home. Since back in those days there was no such thing as the right to light, essentially the right not to have the flow of natural light to your home impeded, it was decided that the building of the structure was entirely legal since the owner of the land owned all of the air above his land too. Today the maxim is still used as a guideline. However, as a property owner, you really only have the right to the airspace above your land located in the lower stratum, the precise boundaries of which are not explicitly labeled. In the end, you are supposed to be entitled to enough airspace to reasonably enjoy the land below that air. However, exactly what that means is up for debate. For example, you can't ask commercial planes to stop flying over your home because the sky is considered to be a public highway. You could potentially, however, prosecute an overzealous news helicopter for hovering over your house if it was impeding your enjoyment of the land. Again, this would vary on a case-by-case -case basis, but there have been instances of people being fined for trespassing by flying over someone's land, so it's not unheard of in British or US law. The most famous case of this kind comes from 1945, when a chicken farmer named Thomas Lee Corsby sued the US government for flying approximately 83 feet above his property, the noise of which caused a bunch of Corsby's chickens to accidentally kill themselves by running into walls. Corsby won his case, and the courts agreed that although a property owner wasn't entitled to own all of the air above their land, they were entitled to enough so that planes flying overhead wouldn't kill their chickens. Progress. Today in the UK, thanks to the Civil Aviation Act of 1982, the generally accepted amount of air above one's roof a person is entitled to is approximately 500 to 1,000 feet, though again, this isn't a hard definition. Likewise, the United States has a similar estimation of about 500 feet, though this has never been officially ruled on by the Supreme Court. In both cases, this may soon be changing with the widespread introduction of drones, both personal, commercial, and those owned by the respective governments. As such, the US federal government particularly has recently been looking into significantly lowering the airspace public highway floor to accommodate this type of aircraft. With that out of the way, what about the earth below your land? Well again, this varies, because owning land doesn't necessarily mean that you own all the mineral rights to it. In a nutshell, the owner of the respective mineral rights to a piece of land is entitled to those substances that could potentially be sitting below a given property, and it's not uncommon for them to be sold separately 
separately to land and property rights. And there have been cases in the past of homeowners finding out that there is a huge deposit of gas under their home that they don't have the rights to, and they have no right to stop the owner of the mineral rights drilling for it. Beyond the loss of money from that gas if you didn't own the mineral rights, this can sometimes kill any property value your land may have previously held. However, if you own both the land and all the mineral rights to a property and you live in the United States, everything below the ground belongs to you unless you happen to stumble on an Indian burial ground or something, in which case you have to report it. Other than that, practically everything is fair game. You can drill for oil and gas or even mine, assuming you have the relevant permits, and anything you find is yours to sell or keep. However, if something below the grounds of your property extends to the property of someone else, like a pool of oil or a vein of gold, then they have equal claim to the portion of the material on their side of the property line. This can get messy very quickly since determining exact boundaries underground is difficult and costly, oh, unless you live in the UK, in which case the Crown has first dibs on all oil, coal, silver, gas, and gold found on public or private property. It should also be noted that in the United States, thanks to compulsory reintegration, gas companies potentially have the right to drill under your lands from an adjacent property if they have leased or been deeded a certain percentage of land surrounding your land, with this percentage varying from state to state. As for how much of the land below your property you own, there's no real limit enforced by courts, and there have been cases of people being prosecuted for trespassing onto other people's property for digging even in the thousands of feet below the ground in search of oil. Of course, in reality, there is a practice practical limit in that if there is a country on the other side of the world from your land, it's probably not one where your country has jurisdiction. Further, there is the small matter of the giant layer of magma in between. But beyond that, you can generally dig away to your heart's content as long as you're not breaking any environmental laws and have the appropriate permits. If you happen to live next to water, your rights again vary greatly depending on the exact situation, and it's covered by a totally different set of laws and rules called riparian rights. If you have a stream or the like running through your land, in Britain you're entitled to fish while they're in the water on your land, but can't do anything that would impede the flow of water to other people's land since all running water eventually flows into the public ocean. Likewise, if navigable water flows across, through, or otherwise near your property, you're not allowed to do anything that would upset its natural course since the grounds beneath all navigable water is owned by the state so the public can use it freely. If your property borders a large body of water on the other hand, in general you have the right to access the water and, if you wish, construct a pier or a wharf. However, you have no right to stop people from using the water for navigational purposes and your rights to the lands beneath the water, if any, only extends to a reasonable level of depth which has never been precisely defined. If you happen to own a chunk of non-navigable water, that's generally yours to do with as you please, barring breaking any environmental laws. As for animals, you cannot claim ownership of any wild animals on your land. You are, however, allowed to hunt them if they're not endangered. Trees, plants, and fruit, on the other hand, are yours to do with as you please, as long as the plant was originally planted on your land. If your neighbor owns any plants or trees that overhang onto or the roots spread out under your property, you're within your rights to trim them back, even the roots, as long as doing so wouldn't kill the plant. However, the original owner still has the rights to any cuttings and can request that they be returned after you've cut them off. The same can be said for any fruit that happens to grow on the tree, so technically taking fruit from such a branch hanging onto your property is theft. However, any leaves that fall off the tree are your problem to deal with unless they cause damage to your property, for example by blocking up your gutters or in the case of roots growing into your septic drainage field or damaging your house foundation, in which case you can ask your neighbor to pay for the damage and if they refuse, you will likely be able to sue them and win. In short, if you own a piece of land, you may own more than you would expect, but in a lot of cases, perhaps less of it than you might wish. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.